Yeah, so uh, we'll just uh, continue a little bit on the startup that we did, um, did uh, last week on SPSS. Um, so we're going to do just uh, basics about uh, descriptive statistics, uh, which has two parts. Uh, about calculating more or less summary numbers for data set and also visualizing with uh, graphics. And in the end, we'll talk a bit more about what we call data management. Uh, uh, yeah. So this is the program, and I'm not really sure how long we need to work today. Maybe we can stop a little bit before. Uh, four o'clock at least. That's always my hope, but then I start talking and time flies, so let's see. Um, yeah, so descriptive statistics is mainly about you have a huge data set and you don't want to look at those raw data, but you want to compute key figures like means, medians, you want to make tables, cross tabulations. Uh, and you typically want to do this, for instance, for subgroups of data and so on. And then also you want to visualize uh, certain characteristics of the data. So we'll try to do this in a somewhat simple and structured way. If you look at SPSS, there is a huge number of menus, and each menu has a huge number of choices. So it's very easy to be overwhelmed in the <coughs> beginning. So we are, in this course, probably only going to use maybe 5% of the choices or something like that that you have in SPSS. Uh, so it's a huge system, and we're just going to scratch the very surface of it in some way. On the other hand, we are going to do the things that people do mostly, the, the basic analysis and the basic descriptive statistics. So we start a little bit looking at continuous. Variables. Which you remember maybe in SPSS was labeled scale variables. And then of course the, the basic key figures, if you have data for a continuous variable, would be things like the mean of it, standard deviation, the median, maybe the quartile something, the minimum and the maximum and the range and so on. So there are at least three basic choices that you have to do this. Um, so these are menu choices. I write like this. It's the same as in the compendium, I think. I write analyze descriptive statistics, descriptives like this. It means the main menu is called analyze. And then there's a sub menu called descriptive stati statistics. And then there is a choice in the third level of that menu called descriptives. So I'm going to show you how this looks. But um, so I'm just going to make it briefly. It's called descriptives. So this is a basic, simple choice. It has a limited number of options for what you can display. It has a very clean and nice output, and that's it. So this is maybe our first choice. The second choice for doing like basic descriptive statistics for a scale vari variable is this one, which is called explore. Um, so this is slightly different. You, you don't sort of get to choose what to display. It just turns out um, a lot of things. Uh, 
So there are, as far as I remember, no particular choices of what you can display here, but you get a lot. And uh, it allows the use of a grouping variable. So if I'm interested in, as I'm going to show you probably, let's say the urbanization level in different countries, I can compute from my sample in this world 95 data. I can compute those key figures for uh, for the whole sample, but I can also group it depending on region, for for example. And that's what, what I mean by a grouping variable. It's a something that is a categorical variable, and you want to find the mean within each group of that variable. Um, this is one way to compute also confidence intervals. So then we do a proper estimation. Um, so it, it will have a somewhat more massive output. And you can also produce graphics at the same time. And as the name in, in indicates, it is uh, very often used in the beginning of an analysis. You just want to explore your data and see to get an overview of these variables. Then you sort of dig into it with this one. Sometimes if you write a report and you just want a nice table summarizing the mean and the standard deviation of a few variables, you certainly might want to use this simpler choice here, for instance. So there are different choices to different tastes. Um, and then there's a third uh, variant of this again, which is called means. I don't know why it's called means, because it, it can produce a lot of different statistics. But it's very often used to compare means between groups. And the output of this one is also sort of easier to, well, it's better, it's more, uh, what do you say, reader friendly than what you get from this one. So continuous variables, descriptive statistics, we have these three choices. Um, yeah. So for instance, this is typically how it looks, the output from the first one here. <coughs> um, I'm going to show you a live example also. But you see, it's, it's a fairly clean, nice table. And this is the basic type of output from um, the explore menu. So my variable here is the urbanization variable in this data set. And you get the sample mean. You get lower and upper bounds for the in the confidence interval for the mean. You can adjust this confidence level. Uh, you get the median, the variance, standard deviation, the minimum, the maximum, the range interquartile range and a few more. So it's nice for overviewing the data, but it's really something you would put in your sort of master thesis or something, a hairy thing like that. Yeah. So let's just have a quick look. And of course, all these things is, yeah, I don't think you'll learn so easily if by just watching me do it. I can show you some differences and some principles about this, but a way to learn is to sit down and try for yourself. And that's what you're going to do on in the exercises for this week, which is So it's going to be a lab on Thursday, and I should remind you that this time we are going to <coughs> the different room. Because there is some collision with another program there, but only this week it's A075. But it's going to be the same, uh, same uh, plan, I guess. Yep. 
Okay, so the whole thing with SPSS, as you have understood, is you go to some menu, then you get submenus. You see, they are almost now in the position that they used all the screen, so we soon have to think of a different layout. Uh, and it's just getting a few more every time I see a new version of the course. So, but luckily, the old ones are remaining more or less the same. So, here you have descriptive statistics. Um, and we have descriptives here. So I click here, then I get to this typical dialog box. And then I get to choose some variables here. And before I do this, OK, you, you can ha sort of rest the cursor over these names, and then it should pop up um, something here. So what you see here now is that it produces the label of the variable here. So in this list, it's the, the variables are listed by their, their longer descriptive label. Uh, maybe sometimes you want to change that. So that's the first thing I'm going to tell you today is um, something that I don't think is in the compendium. So the dialog box variable list is this list. And almost any menu you open in SPSS will produce, I mean, this list. So you choose some variables, and then you do something to it. That's the basic SPSS workflow, uh, in a way. Um, and there are two choices. You might want to show the labels. These are the labels. But as you see, they are maybe not always the easiest thing to have here. Here are the variable names. So maybe I want in this list instead just the names of the variables. So the question is how to choose. And this is done if I just cancel this now. And I go to something like edit and options. <coughs> and you see, basically, this is where you do a lot of these fundamental settings for your SPSS work. So in principle, it should be here. And it's actually the first choice that you get under the general flag here. So we choose general. And then variable list, display names or display names you choose. Um, and then you could, if you like, choose to show the variables in alphabetical order, or it can be in the file order, which means the first variable is first, the second is second, and so on. And well, that's what I wanted to do here at the moment. So I just want to display names instead for a second. Okay. So just note that you have lots of choices here. For instance, the viewer. This is what I did in the first lecture, and someone maybe has put it back, but I don't want this, for instance. So you can do some choices like that to, to in improve the experience of working. Yeah. So if I try to do the same now with descriptives, you see that my variable list is a little bit nicer in a way. I have just the variable names here now. And the labels, of course, show up if I rest the cursor over the names in the data set like this. So the urban variable is the people 
the percentage of people living in cities in various countries. Okay, so what was I actually going to do? I was going to show you the descriptive uh, menu. So, yeah. We can take one or a few variables. There are some options here. So, here's a very limited list of options. You can show the mean. Um, standard deviation, the minimum, the maximum, and a few others. So you continue and just click OK. And this is the output, basically. Um, yeah. So that's fairly easy. Let's look at the um, Explore is in descriptive statistics here. Choose this. Now you get a little bit more. You get, well, you just have to learn the terminology here in SPSS. So something like a dependent list, the dependent variables. These are the ones that you want to investigate. And then you can have a factor list, means you want to look at this variable in, in groups based on what is your chosen factor. So let's have a look at the urbanization without the factor first. Um, let's produce some graphics. It takes a little time. It's running something down here. I don't know exactly why this should take a long time for SPSS. Maybe I asked for something <laughs> very difficult. No. So here is the now the new output. And remember, when we work with the uh, Output, we are in the second window of SPSS. So we have the data window over there somewhere. But this is the, well, it's called the statistics viewer. So it shows you the output, basically. And when this becomes messy, you can start probably you can cut things. And collapse things. Yeah. So this is the case processing summary. It tells me, well, I have 109 observations, but this variable has only 108. So there's some data missing. For one country, it's missing. So I have about 1% missing data. 99% per present. And then the urbanization, like here, is probably the same as I showed you in the slides. So you get these key numbers for this variable. And you get a histogram, if you like, and you get something more. Just, just a box plot for the single, for the whole variable. So, yeah. And let's do the same now, but with a grouping variable. Then I must remind you of this very nice button up here, recall recently used dialogues. So I'm going to do the same, but I'm just going to modify it a little bit. Then I just uh, awake the pre previous use of this. So I'm going to have the same variable here, but I'm going to put some factor here to split my analysis. In a way. So I'll split by region, for instance. And we can do the same. Mm. Yeah. Let's, OK, let's just do this. So 
now you get this little bit uh, overwhelming output, but it's the summary for the urban variable within OECD, within in U East Europe, and so on. And then you get histograms for each of these regions. So it shows you some distribution within each region. And let's just look at the final one here also, while we're at it. And this is in another top menu for called compare means, and then choose means here. So. Let's keep it to the same, just showing you can do exactly the same thing here. And you have a few options here. You see that you can uh, choose among a lot of key figures that you want to compute here. So maybe I want this, the mean and the standard deviation, put the number of cases last, and add the Median should be somewhere. And let's put that close to the mean like this. Yeah. So I'm not going to bother you with this, but <coughs> if you look at this menu, it has. In addition to having the possibility of a factor, you can have layers of factors. So I could go in, look at a, a different categorical variable, and sort of look at the what we call the cross section of those two. So that would mean in each region, I look into each religion, and then look at all what is the urbanization in all. Uh, say, Buddhist countries in East Asia, for instance. It's a level of detail that we will rarely use, but it's it could be useful in more sort of hardcore social research or something. So you can have a, several layers of, of depth, in a way. So now it, it looks like this. And if you compare to the Explore menu, it's a very different sort of impression. Here is very clean, and you get to design more or less what you want here. Uh, yeah. And then sometimes. Hopefully, you will use SPSS a lot in your master program, and you will want to use it for some coursework in other classes, for instance, and also in this course a little bit. Uh, you might produce some output like this, and you want to have it into your uh, Microsoft Word or whatever text uh, editor you use. So it's just a matter of playing a little bit with copy. Copy special, you can copy it as an image if you like. And different of these formats, I'm not exactly sure what works best in every setting, but um, but it's more or less a copy and paste thing. So you just find the right option here, you, you figure it out. Just I, I don't need to show you this. You've you probably done things like this before. Uh, I can show you something. You can edit these tables if you double click here. Not there. Yeah. Click here. Double click. And then you can do a little bit of editing here. I think if you just um, 
right click on this thing, you get to see some cell properties. You can turn down the number of decimals, for instance. And you can move things up and down, apparently. That wasn't what I was thinking to. But You maybe want to have a bold fa face font for the names there. It looks like this. And then there's some options for just um, let's see. Yeah. table looks. You can change the sort of outlook of this. If for some reason you think this looks better than the previous, you would choose this, <coughs> for instance. <coughs> and then copy, paste, and export. Um, well, let's not go into this. And shut it down for now. So that's a start for descriptive statistics. Um, let's find our lecture notes again. Yeah. So This is a very common measure in descriptive statistics, the correlation coefficient. We used to call it something like Rxy or Rxy. And it's usually computed between two continuous variables. And it's a number between 0 and 1. And just show you in SPSS where you find this. Let's analyze, uh, correlate, and then this is, it's called bivariate. So it means you take two variables and you compute just the raw correlation between them. And then uh, <coughs> yeah, we can take a few of these. Let's just take these two. And you get what is called a correlation matrix. Okay, it's a little bit more exciting if we have three variables. So let's do. Um, let's do the same as in the notes. So I click OK. get this correlation matrix and it shows for three variables the correlation of each of them with the other <coughs> three actually so it's here is the urbanization variable and here is the average female life expectancy so the correlation between that one and this one is 0 0.74 in the sample um, and the correlation of urbanization with itself is of course one all the variables have correlation one with themselves, of course. Um, for instance, the male life expectancy and the female life expectancy is very strongly correlated in a country. It's 0 0.98. It's almost identical <coughs> variables. Um, yeah, there is something called significant correlation which is labeled or marked with the two stars here. So that means it's a real statistically significant correlation, not just co coincidental. Yeah. So that's not too much to say about that at the moment. <coughs> but Turn to um, K 
categorical variables. And in that case, we are more often interested in sort of summarizing for each value of the variable how many observations are there. So you have these frequencies. And in the case that you have, for instance, two or more categorical variables, you might be interested in how many are in each combination of these uh, variables. So then you talk about cross tabs. So I'll just show you also a few live examples here. Maybe it's not so exciting to look at, but uh, you'll do this for yourself later on. Um, so let's go to analyze descriptive statistics. Here you find the frequencies. And you more or less just put um, your categorical variables in here. And you can add some graphics if you like directly from this menu, or you can produce other graphics separately if you want. So it's not very exciting, but you just get to count the number of occurrences in each of the, the observed religions. Here. And then you get the display like this. Okay. Um, there is one comment in the slides there that you can use this here for a scale. Variable is a sort of somewhat unusual uh, way to do it, but you can find, for instance, the quartiles um, by using this menu here. So I can just show you briefly. So I suppose the population, for instance. And now we're going to do statistics. We need to make some choices here. I want to see the quartiles. Or you could, I mean, the quartiles means I want to cut the data set into uh, into what? into four pieces that each contain 25% of the data. But you could do more generally here and ask for cut points for 10 equal groups, if you like that. So if I want sort of every 10% subgroup of data to be separated by some numbers like this, you can do it here. And certainly now you do not want to display the frequency table because you have a continuous variable which has probably 109 different values. Yeah. And I really didn't want that either, the bar chart. I wanted just this one. So here you get the percentile. So this is the first, the second, and the third percentile, and this is then equal to the median. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right, so that's a little sidetrack, but um, I'm 
more importantly, this cross tabulation menu is quite useful. Um, we're going to have just a look. Let's see, I just planned some. Yep. Well, in this particular data set with the, the demographic data, there are more or less just two basic categorical variables. And you maybe start to be becoming a little bit tired of this example, but um, we'll switch to something else fairly soon, I guess. So it's still in the descriptive statistics, cross tabs. And then you choose something for the rows, something for the columns. And then it will count how many co are in each combination of values. And yeah, we don't want to do anything here for the moment, but we could choose to show. <coughs> um, and in this dialogue, I always make the wrong choices, so I have to try several times before I get to <laughs> do what I want. But uh, suppose I want to see how many percentage does each religion fill up in each region, then I could probably do like this. So I wanted percentages in columns. And try to go OK. Yeah, so we, we get this. Oh, this is horribly. Yeah, you get this table that is basically too large, I guess. Um, So it's not very nice to look at. In my PC, in my office, I have a different l resolution, so it looks a little bit better. But um, Anyway, you saw that I managed to do exactly what I wanted. I wanted to say, OK, here is the OECD. All of these are OECD counts. And there are no animist, there are no Buddhist main countries in the OECD, but there are 10 Catholic. And those are 47, 48% of the whole. OECD part of the sample. So you can do things like this. Yeah. And of course, when you do like a report on this, you might think that maybe it's a good idea to take some of these more those religions that doesn't count so much. I mean, it's a little bit tricky with the, the case that you have huge religions that are only one, counting for one. So it seems insignificant, but it isn't. So, But um, what you normally would consider doing there is to, to produce, uh, uh, let's say, A variable like this. This is a modified variable based on the original religion variable, but it it takes all of the small groups into a, a bag called other. So here is an other, it's, which is not one of the most uh, widespread religions. You might say. So then, if you do, let's say. Uh, cross tab and I'd switch this variable with the modified one which I called main religion um, well what happened yeah, I switched the region with the main religion This one should go. Now this should be better. So you see, at least you get a table that is somewhat more compact than the previous one. So 
this is yeah, this is cross tabs basically. Um, yep. This is what I, the final thing I talked about was is to collapse categories. So if you have some categories with very few observations, you might want to just smack them together into something called other or something. Yeah. Yeah. So. This is the basic thing about summary statistics. You have these guys to compute all of these means, medians, maximum, minimum, and so for continuous variables. And for categorical variables, mainly these two are the basic tools. Uh, so when moving from summary or key figures, the other aspect is graphics and visualization. which is also, of course, quite important in descriptive statistics. And the main tool, in addition to what you saw, that we have some of these other di dialogues here. They can produce some graphics. But if you want to control more of it, it's something called the chart builder that is to be used. Chart builder. Um, and it's, I mean, it's too extensive to go into any sort of detail in it, but you just you will learn very easily the main principles here, and then you figure out by yourself, more or less. Um, so it, the main, main dialogue looks like this. You choose the type of graphics down here, and then you get a sort of preview area here where you can sort of drag variables in and out, and you get an idea how it's going to look, and then Ultimately, you click OK and hope for the best. So it has these basic steps. You choose the type of chart. You decide whether it's going to be a single chart or a, a group of charts based on some categorical variable. Then you choose the variables that you want to visualize. And then there's another dialog that allows for some special settings called element properties. So mainly you will learn to use this by playing with the thing in the exercises. Um, I will show you some examples, but maybe we need a little break. If we do 10 minutes, then we'll uh, get back to this and we'll go five, five minutes earlier.